What's going on everybody? My name is Rudy. Welcome to the channel. Today we are running a review on the Amos HDMI 4-in-1 4 USB selector KVM switch. This is Rude's World. And let's do a quick highlight reel before we jump into an unboxing, features, and demo. Here we go. All right, everybody, so as we run through this unboxing, let me run through you through a few key features. But if you'd rather just skip ahead to the demo, just check out the timestamp in the description box below and you'll get there. Otherwise, if you wanna know the key features, here they are. Like with any KVM switch, you have a shared keyboard mouse input with two USB uh, slots. But the main draw here as well is that you get two additional slots for a total of four. There's a power toggle all the way to the left as well as the physical switches. You get four machines, which means a total of four HDMI and USB-C outputs at the back. Obviously this machine, or sorry, this switch uh, comes with four USB-C connectors which is a nice improvement from the last model that we saw that utilized USB-A to USB. So if you have any spare USB-C connectors alone, that's great. You also get a remote for remote toggle switching, as well as a singular HDMI cable, which presumes that you have multiple HDMI cables on hand for your other devices. So I was able to cop this particular model off of Amazon at a price point of $64. Now for $4 off, is my math right? Yeah, for $4 off, you can actually get a model without the remote control, which is part of the four switching modes. There's a physical toggle, toggle by mouse as well as by keyboard. By far the remote is the funnest. Um, and it's interesting because even though it supports only four machines, the remote actually has toggles for an additional four for a total of eight, which is weird. Anyway, those were the dimensions. Here's what comes with the box, but obviously you saw that in the unboxing. Let's jump into some demos. All right, first off is a showcase of the physical toggling. I'm not gonna show you what the output looks like on the displays, nor a test of the keyboard, nor mouse, because you guys should know how that works by now. But pretty standard stuff. You have the ability to toggle between your four different machines, assuming you've got them all hooked up via the PC1, PC2, PC3, and four indicators. An LED green light shows you which one turns on once you select them with a satisfying click. Alrighty, next up is a showcase of the remote control toggling. So this is all done via an infrared or IR sensor there in the middle between the mouse input and that PC1 LED indicator. You don't see it, but off screen, I'm clicking on the remote and just toggling between the four machines. Now you'll probably notice that I have, there's the remote, only have two connectors at the back, but um, once I get that all set up, we'll run a quick demo of how that actually looks and outputs to the various peripherals. That being the display, and mouse keyboard interaction. All right, so the alternative to the remote as well as the physical toggles is the ability to toggle between or switch between devices using your mouse. And the way you do that is by holding down the middle scroll button on your mouse and then clicking either on the left click button or the right click button, depending on which direction of the machine you want to switch to. So for example, right now I'm on PC2, hold the scroll button, click on the left click button, and that brings me to PC1 or machine one. The inverse is true as well. I hold that scroll button, right click brings me to PC2 or machine two, and so on and so forth. So I can go to PC3 by right clicking again, and then off to four by right-clicking another time. It's kind of weird, to be honest, and I much prefer using the 
remote and the physical toggle buttons, but it's nice to know that's there. And if you get the model that doesn't have a remote control, it's cool to know that this is something you can uh, utilize if you end up putting the switch, let's say, behind your monitor or under your desk, you know, because it's a lot of wires. All right, last check on the list of ways to switch or toggle is using the keyboard. Apparently you can use the keyboard by holding the control button or pressing it twice and then clicking one, two, three, or four, but that didn't work for me. So uh, it probably has something to do that I'm using a Mac keyboard. So just keep that in mind if you have a similar setup. Anyway, let's jump into what it actually looks like when you've got it all put together. Using the remote, I toggled away from one Mac machine into another. And you can see that the mouse works, keyboard works, typing random things in Finder, and I'm currently on my MacBook Pro. Right now, switching over into the MacBook Air, which is the middle machine, you see there right up front, uh, that desert wallpaper comes up again. Now I'm in a separate machine, even though it's still Mac, and keyboard and mouse works perfectly. All right, and then finally, toggled into, just wanted, because I wanted to test this out, was an Amazon Fire Stick. Obviously there's an HDMI input there, and just wanted to see if that worked and response to the dongle work well. And as you can see, launched Netflix, no problem whatsoever. And the first machine that I had up was Windows 10, but um, it works fine. Just didn't have it in the video. <laughs> All right, final verdict. So at a price point again of $64, which is almost twice that of the two port HDMI uh, KVM switch that I reviewed last time, is it worth it? Well, again, as always, it depends. But if you are someone who only has a need to toggle between two separate machines, which I feel is most people, um, then I wouldn't say it's quite worth it until you get to the point where it's, you know, you have a need to switch between four different machines or three different machines. Um, this allows you the flexibility to do so. I didn't cover it, but the additional two USB hubs is actually really, really useful, especially if you're transferring files between machines and don't want to unplug your flash drives or hard drives. And um, you can actually then kind of toggle your webcam and your mic, whatever the case may be, into the KVM switch and toggle between the various machines that you have up. So that coupled with the fact that it also has the ability to toggle using the remote control, as well as the mouse, as well as the keyboard, which I wasn't able to run myself. I definitely think it is a great addition to anyone's uh, remote home setup or even just uh, regular kind of office setup so two thumbs up it's great the build quality is really good solid I haven't had any issues with it thus far but if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and if you want to see more give it a sub leave some comments in the comment section below. If you have any questions, I'm happy to report on progress in the months to come, but in the one or two weeks that I've been using thus far, it's been great. All right. Thanks for watching everyone. Till next time, catch you later.